Planet Shakers is a global ministry that has grown from a small youth conference in Australia to now impacting every continent of the world. Through its church, awakenings, music tours and other ministries, Planet Shakers has a mandate to empower generations to win generations. Keep living according to what God says and He who has started a good work will complete it. I think it's about us walking the journey of faith and growing in that faith and seeing God come through as a result. time to time, life's pressures will really test our willingness to practice genuine honour in our relationships. When life is running smoothly, it is easy to honour those who sit in authority over us, our peers and those we are responsible for. What happens to our honour when we get offended or disagree? This can be a real game changer. How about you? Will you continue to practice honour in your relationships when circumstances become difficult? Or is your honour linked to and dependent on your emotional responses to real life relationship pressure? It might help to remember that God never stops honouring us, even when tensions arise in our relationships. His overriding emotion of love is so powerful that it cannot be derailed by circumstances that come and go as a natural part of life. I'm Russell Evans, and I want to shake the planet. As I said, I've been brought up in the church all my life. You know, uh, my mum, she was a, she just passed away, went to, to be with Jesus in heaven. And, uh, uh, you know, she is a person who knew the Bible. We were taught the Bible. We're Bible believers. If God says it, it is what we believe. And uh, we used to call her the walking concordance because she knew the Bible. She, she would give my brother and myself incentives to, be, to read the Bible. That she'd say, I'll give you a new tennis racket if you read John, all of John and remember this memory verse, that memory verse, and that. So we did that because we like playing tennis. And, and so, she, you know, my dad would be in the middle of the sermon and, and he would go, uh, Lorraine, what, where was that scripture? And she'd tell him where that scripture was. She could quote you scripture. We had scripture all over our walls in our house. We had plaques with scripture. 
you know, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. I'm more than a conqueror through Christ who gives me strength. You know, I can do all things through Christ. When I was naughty, she would come and put these posters in my room, you know, written in hand. Um, Children, obey your parents in the law for it is good. She would, we would have scripture in the bathroom, fear not for I'm with thee. We'd have scripture everywhere. We had scripture on this little piece of wood. It wasn't that little, it was about that long. And on this little piece, well, this piece of wood and it would have spare the rod and spoil the child. And on the other side, it had I need thee every hour. And, and I should have put at the end of it, Jesus wept and so did I. Um, been brought up in the church, seen so many Things happen in, in church, yeah. um, you know. Yeah. In fact, I, was taught, I would tell people, if there was a cha choice between who would discipline me, whether it be mum and dad, it'd always be dad because he'd feel sorry for me. Um, I remember one time I stayed away from school because I felt the call of the Lord <laughs> to witness to the arcade places and... Uh, <laughs> because everyone's a missionary to their school, but who's gonna win the ones who aren't at school? And there's so many hurting people there. Um, and so I said yes to the Lord. Uh, not really, yes to my flesh. And I went to these arcades and uh, came home the first day and mum said, what'd you do at school? And I thought, well, we played a game that added up scores, so that's like math. And I said, oh, well, we did math. And, and then there was like a sporting game there, so that was sports, so we did sports, and uh, what else you do? And there was sort of science fiction sort of games, and so that was like science, and, uh, and so every day, that, and the first day it worked really well, so I thought I'd try it the second day, and the third day, and the fourth day, and then come to the seventh day, and come home, and on the seventh day, God did not rest. Um, <laughs> Mum asked me how school was, and I did the whole thing, and she said, well, what's this? She shows a letter from the school that's saying I hadn't been at school for seven days. And I'm like, oh, my friends stole the school stationery and um, they've written bogus letters to the parents. And uh, she goes, I rang the school. I said, oh, you did? She said, yes. And I said, oh, you're beautiful, mum. Wow. <laughs> I know you're 45, but you really look 30. And uh, you, you just... You, you don't need, you don't, well, Botox wasn't around then, but you don't need a, anything. You're just beautiful. She says, wait in the bedroom for your father. So I'm in the bedroom and I'm doing deals with God. I'm saying, God, if you keep that rod from me, I'll, I'll serve you. Um, I'll be a missionary for a week just to make up the seven days. And, and my dad walks in and he's got the stick and he's crying. He's crying. Think about it. He's crying with a stick in his hand. <laughs> and then he says, this is going to hurt me more than it's going to hurt you. I said, Dad, give me the stick. You bend over and let's see if that's okay. <laughs> and our parents, we say some dumb things at times like, do you want a spanking? What's a kid going to say? Yeah, give me one, you know. I've had the fortunate 
life have been brought up with awesome people, and, but I've seen people in church life who come in and, and you hear about, you hear their pastor or, the, or a guest or a preacher come in or they begin to preach the word and they begin to say, I believe a city will be won. And people, yes, amen. And, and they, some of those people over a period of time allow cynicism to get in and allow disappointment to get in and allow small thinking to get in. And, and they hear their same statements and they go, yeah, heard that before. Whatever. Because they've stopped honoring the word. This man believed Jesus at what he said. And if we'd have a people in the body of Christ that would believe what God says, and when it's declared, because there's something powerful about the declared word of the Lord. And when it's declared, you see, the world wasn't thought into existence, it was spoken to existence. You form your world through your words. And this man is there and he believed what Jesus said. I, I say to our church, you know, you can come to church and, and you preach the word and, and, and it's those who believe what's said is actually receive the inheritance of what's said. It's those who, who sit bit with a cynical mindset and cross their arms. See, what they're doing is they're honouring the whatever instead of honouring the God of the promise. Because every generation's had whatever. Just this generation has more of it with an attitude. Whatever. <laughs> Doris Day saying whatever will be, will be. Every generation's had whatever. It's what you honour is what you walk towards. <laughs> I'll give you an example of this. Beginning of last year, God gave me a prophetic word. He said, it's a year of favour. Now my church could have gone, whatever. Or they went, yes and amen. And that's what they did. Then we had Bishop T.D. Jakes come and preach on favour. And they went, yes and amen. Then you and your gracious uh, releasing of Pastor Robert come and preach the blessed life. And they went, yes and amen. And we honoured what was said and our giving in our church went up 75% within a 12 month period. What happened at the end of that 12 months, I asked our church, who's had a job promotion? Who's had a new job? Who's had financial breakthrough this year? Would you stand to your feet? 90% of our church stood. Why did that happen? Because of honour. Mm. <laughs> this year, I, I've declared the year of supernatural. And I remember in a meeting I said uh, that God was healing people's eyes and God was gonna heal a whole heap of people's eyes. Now we've got a lot of international students in our church and uh, you know they do a lot of studies so they always wear glasses. And so one service, 40% of the, the church stood because they were international students in that meeting. And, and we were there, begin to pray and begin to believe it. And there were people that could have sat back, well, I've stood for healing before and it didn't work. Or they go, yes and amen to that word. That's for me. I, I honour the word. A lady stood. She hadn't seen for 20 years properly. She had to wear contact lenses. And the next morning, she put her contact lenses in and she couldn't see. She took them out. And she looked at the trees and saw detail like she'd never seen for a long time. She went to the doctors. They said, you have 20-20 vision. We're, we're just amazed at what happened. And all of a sudden, people begin to honour the Word. You see, by the way, the word testimony in the Old Testament means do it again. And every time there's a testimony declared and there's an honouring of that testimony, it releases something into the atmosphere for God to do it again. When there's an honouring of what God does, it actually brings inheritance and then it becomes generational inheritance and then it becomes multiplication. That's why honour is so critical in our life.
everybody honours. They either honour scepticism, negativity or small thinking and they receive the fruit of scepticism, negativity and small thinking. If you honour what God says, you receive what He says. A few weeks after that lady was healed, people started getting healed all over the place. There was a, a man who had for 20 years had, 90, had only 3% sight in one eye because 20 years ago, he had a wood chip fly out of a, a lathe and hit him in the, sight, in the eye and he lost 97% of his sight in that one eye. They had to put a valve in his eye to stop it, uh, to help it not get glaucoma. And for 20 years, he's had 3% sight. He heard the word of the Lord. He honoured it and said, yes, that's for me. He's there, and as his hands are lifted high, he saw a, a vision of this wood chip flying out, and he saw a hand go up and stop it. He opened his eye, and he could see completely, totally the same as the other eye. He turned to his wife, and he goes, which eye is, I've forgotten, which eye have I got a problem with? Because I can see well in both. She looked into his eye and saw that the valve that was in his eye had disappeared, had it completely gone. And miracles begin to break out all over the place. Why? Because of honour. We honoured God's Word. And in fact, in fact, just quickly, right now, I believe the same Spirit that rose Christ from the dead is here right now. If you need a breakthrough in your eyesight, we're just going to agree just for a moment. If you need a breakthrough in your eyesight, would you stand to your feet right now? You need a breakthrough. And we're going to agree. We're going to honour the Word of God right now in Jesus' name. Ready? Here we go. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, God. You've done it in the past and we release it again. We speak 2020 vision in a people's situation. We declare to these eye conditions that they be healed in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Jesus, for what you've done and we expect what you're about to do and we declare miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle. And if you believe that in this place, give the Lord a hand of praise. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. You can be seated, you can be seated. You see, it doesn't have to be this, ooh, it just happens like that. Trust me, people are gonna get healed of that. You're gonna get testimony of that. I have great faith for that right now. In fact, there are people here and you have a problem with asthma and God is healing you right now. And, and asthma is being healed. And we agree right now. If you have asthma, just lift your hand and we're gonna agree with you that Jesus heals you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we declare to every asthma to go in the name of Jesus. We speak to these, these, uh, this condition to go and we speak great breathing in the name of Jesus. Someone's shoulder up here is getting healed right now. The power of God is here. We honour what God said. Now, I've got to quickly go. The Bible says that he walked, he started on home. He had the Word. He didn't have the report of the Word coming to pass. So he starts walking. He's walking through the day. At the beginning, when God gives you a Word, it's exciting. But I've discovered the, the further you get away from that Word, the further of time it becomes between that Word, Sometimes the enemy comes in and says, did he really say? Didn't you come to get Jesus to go to your house and, you, and he just said, you go? And he's walking and he, he would have had to walk through the dark of night. You see, what happens is in the dark of night, spiritually, emotionally, physically, whatever situation you go through, the enemy comes in and says, does he really say? What keeps you walking to your promise is the honour of the Word that was spoken over you and the Word that God declared in, his, in, in, the, in the Word of God. And so through the night, He's walking through the dark. You see, people, you might be going through some dark time. My encouragement to you is honour what God says about your life. Walk to the promise. Don't walk. Even though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death, don't fear evil. Just keep walking to your promise because surely goodness and mercy are waiting for you. And, and, and His presence and His life and His power is there in every situation. But what keeps you going is the honouring of what He said. 
He still hadn't received the miracle until the next day. Oh, the miracle or, or, or had already happened, but he hadn't heard about it. And that's what happens many times. God's already done it. In fact, he did it on the cross. He says, it is finished and it is done. It's, but sometimes there's a walking towards the promise for the promise to come into fruition in our life. And it's honour that keeps us walking that way. So many people at times when they go through stuff and the devil comes and it says, did he really say? They go off on paths and get distracted or sit down in their problem instead of saying, no, God said it. So I'm keep going. I'm stepping forward. I'm going to honour what he said. And when we do, the miracles come our way. So my encouragement to you this morning is, Honour the inheritance in people. Honour it to see a generational blessing. Honour what the Word of God says and keep living according to what God says. And He who has started a good work will complete it and He will bless you and He will prosper you and He will cause His face to shine upon you. And this morning, if we're honours of, honorers of God's Word, come on, let's give the Lord a hand of praise in this room right now and thank Him for what He all my life I've struggled with money whether it's through my childhood growing up or through my teenage years uh, even through young adult and into my married life now with a couple of young kids I've always had a mental understanding of what God says in his word about providing for us and that there's a promise of abundance for us uh, in our walk with God but I really felt that there was a disconnect in my heart and, and in terms of um, my everyday walk with Him, in terms of trusting God in, in reality. It never really boiled down to uh, a tangible trust on a day-to-day -day basis, walking through specific circumstances. For the last couple of years, I was working in Port Melbourne for an Australian company. It was a company that was going through a lot of change and the job was quite difficult. Uh, just due to the environment that I was working with and, and the dynamics in that workplace. On top of that, I was travelling about two and a half hours a day in commute and it was really taking away from our family time. So we were really praying at the start of this year and even at times last year for God to provide a better job uh, for us. At the start of this year, there was a word in our church about large and significant increases in salary and my wife and I really laid hold of that as a promise for our family. Pastor Russell also spoke a sermon on unprecedented provision and again we were really encouraged to believe for a new job. Over the next few months and even over the previous year as I'd been applying for different jobs I really never heard back from anyone and it was very frustrating similar circumstance to what a lot of people go through when they're looking for work. Then shortly after conference, Pastor Russell had a word for me, a prophetic word for me, one Sunday morning, and just really encouraged me about the next step of my life and how God had not forgotten me and how God's promises were gonna come through. Within a week, I had two job offers. Both of them I'd applied for previously and they came back uh, with, with a positive response. Um, I went through the interview processes and um, they were both really excited to have me on board. And the greatest thing about these jobs were that they were both a 30% increase on my last position. They were both 10, within 10 minutes from my house, which was just incredible to think about. And it was really just God's blessing on my life to say, here's a choice. Now I'm working for a great company, I'm in a great position, I couldn't have written the job description better for myself, there's a great pay increase, I'm closer to home for my family, and we're just really loving that God came through for us. But even more than that, I think it's about us walking the journey of faith and growing in that faith and seeing God come through as a result of a renewed sense of trust and belief in His Word.
for joining us again today. May you be blessed and favored and that your faith would be stirred to believe God for even more. In today's episode, we looked a little deeper into honor. When you honor God's word, you receive from his promises. I've heard of many powerful healing testimonies of how people have honored the word of God and received their miracle. Mark honored the now word of God spoken over our church. And in doing so, he walked towards the promise of provision and received an incredible new job. If you haven't invited Jesus into your life, why don't you do so right now? Honor the incredible inheritance that's available for you right now. Ask him into your life.